This one is talking about a binomial experiment. And you have to figure out whether it meets all the requirements for a binomial experiment or not. The things that you want to look for are whether it's with or without replacement, whether there are only two outcomes or more than two outcomes, and whether there are a fixed number of trials. Since the experiment consists of drawing 10 marbles, that's your number of trials. So the number of trials is 10. So it meets that requirement about having the fixed number of trials. And then it's selecting from the bank with replacement. So that means that the trials are independent. So that requirement is met. And then it says it's recording the colors of the marbles. We actually have three different colors. So that means that they're, if they're just recording the colors, that means there are three possible outcomes for each trial. That doesn't meet the requirement because it has to be only two possible outcomes. So that means that it doesn't meet the requirements of a binomial experiment. So this is another one where it's asking you if it meets the requirements of a binomial distribution. So we want to think about those same things. First of all, we have a random sample of 12 households selected. And this is selecting from households in the US. So we do have a fixed number of trials, which would be 12, since we're selecting 12 households. And then for the independence, we're not selecting with replacement, but if we're looking at all the households in the US, that's a very large population. That means we can use that 5% rule, which says you can count the trials as being independent if the sample size is less than 5% of the population size. It's definitely going to be less than 5% in this case. So the trials are independent. We want to look at our outcomes. What they're asking is about whether the household has a landline or not. So that makes our two possible outcomes. So that requirement is met. And then the other one is that the probability of success is the same for each trial. So for this, our probability of success, if 42% ho of households do have a landline, our probability of success for each time we select one household would be 42%. So it's the same for each one. So that requirement is met also. Yes, it does meet the requirements. So we need to find the N and the P. The N is just the number of trials. The N is 12. And then the P is the probability of success on each trial. So that's 42%. And we usually want to write that as a decimal. So it would be 0.42. We want to describe what the variable x would represent. x is the number of successes. If we're counting our p as 42%, that means we're saying that a success is that the household does have a landline. x is going to be the number of households with a landline out of the 12. So then we can do some of these probability problems. And here's where you really have to think about these. If you have something that looks like a binomial experiment, then you have to think about how to do the probabilities and use the binome PDF or the binome CDF on your calculator. So for example, this one, you might see this and say, well, okay, six out of 12 means 50%. That's not what this is because you're actually doing this as a binomial distribution. Find the probability that X is exactly six and we have this binomial distribution with n equals 12, p equals 0.42. So on your calculator, you do binome PDF, put in your n, your p, and your x. So this comes out to be 0 0.1931. Then the probability that fewer than five have a landline. Remember, if you do have a binomial distribution, then your sample space so all the possible outcomes is all the possible numbers of successes. So your sample space 
goes from zero up to 12 in this one. So it goes from zero up to your number of trials. If we want fewer than five, you have to pay strict attention to whether you're including the number or not. Fewer than five means you're not including the five. Fewer than five would include the outcomes zero, one, two, three, and four. You could use the binome CDF because it automatically goes from zero up to whatever number you put in for X. So we could do binome CDF, put in our N, our P, and the top number here, which is the four. This comes out to be 0.3825. Then the probability that at least six have a landline. Again, we want to look at the sample space and figure out exactly which of those outcomes would be included in this. At least six means it's six or more. This would be everything from six up to 12. We can't use the binome CDF directly because it automatically goes from zero up to a number. And we don't really want to find each of these separately and add them all together. So what we can do instead is use the complement. So the complement of this would be everything from zero up to five. It's everything from the sample space that's not already included here. For this one, we could use binome CDF. We just wanna put in five for our X. That's gonna give us 0 0.6111. But then to get the probability for this one, we have to subtract this number from one. So this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.6111, which is going to be 0.3889. So that's actually our answer for that question. Then the probability that at least one of the households has a landline, that means that we're going from 1 up to 12. Again, we want to use the complement. If we look at this compared to our sample space up here, the only thing that's missing is zero. So the complement of this is just zero. We could use the binome PDF. And just put in zero for our X. That's 0 0.0014. The probability for this one, we take one minus 0 0.0014 which would give us 0.9986. For the mean and the standard deviation, these ones are both really easy for the binomial distribution. So for the mean, it's NP. For the standard deviation, it's the square root of N times P times one minus P. So we already know the N and the P. So for the mean, we're gonna have 12 times 0.42. For the standard deviation, we'd have the square root of 12 times 0.42 times one minus 0.42. Our mean would be 5.04. Our standard deviation is going to be 1.71. And then last question on this one is, out of the sample of 12 households, how many would you expect to have landlines? The keyword here is expect. That means it's asking for the expected value. That's the same as the mean. So that's 5.04. We'd expect to have approximately five of them with landlines.